The Big Room All throughout Canada, a sizable handful of older folks claim to have seen a show titled The Big Room. At least, that's the most common title people use. Other people remember it being called in The Big Room or A Big Room, or some variation of those titles. Here are the accounts I've collected from people who've talked about it. Supposedly, the first known record of this show was in Toronto in the early 1950s, and the last known record was in Vancouver in the early 1980s. It never aired on any one specific TV station, but would instead air on random stations depending on the date, and would only be broadcast on one or a few specific TVs at a time. Every single episode of the show was in black and white, even after the majority of the country had switched to color. What was the show about? Most testimonies agree it consisted of a large cast of characters getting into silly antics in a large room. No two episodes would have the exact same characters, but supposedly the cast consisted of a mix of puppets and people in costumes. Reports of the cast themselves vary, but the most consistent descriptions include a woman with a cartoonishly large nose, a person in a rubber cow mask who spoke entirely in mooing, a monkey puppet with gross human teeth, a person in an unsettling white rabbit costume, a man whose face was a smooth white mask with two black eyes and a smiling black mouth, a bird-like puppet with messy feathers, and the disembodied talking head of a teenage girl mounted on the wall like a stuffed deer. Due to the presence of Japanese text in some episodes, some speculated the show was of Japanese origin, though this was never confirmed. It's also worth noting that the show had only been viewed by children, and never by adults or teens. None of the reported viewers had been over the age of 12 when they had watched it. But what makes this show so infamous, and why so many people talk about it despite there being no footage or evidence of it existing, is the ending of each episode. At the end of each episode, the cast would all turn to the camera and thank the viewers, and then they would name drop the specific person watching right now. If there was more than one person in the room, the cast would mention all of their names too. Some children were frightened by this. Others found it flattering, and didn't realize the horror of the situation until they had grown up. first heard about this show from my mother, when she was telling me about some of the shows she watched back when she was a child in the 70s. I didn't think too much of the big room at the time, sure, it was a little weird that the show somehow knew the name of my mom and her brother, but it must have just been a weird coincidence, or the result of distorted memories. It wasn't until I decided to look the show up out of curiosity that I started to become weirded out. There was no IMDb or Wikipedia page for the show, and CBC had no mention of it on any of their sites. I did, however, find a very compelling forum thread about it, so I immediately clicked. The thread was mostly filled with younger people closer to my age who had heard about the show from their older relatives, though there were a few older users who claimed to have seen it themselves. The more I read through the thread and learned about the show, the more interested I became. That, that was half a year ago, and ever since then, I've been asking around, both online and in person, to see if I can find anyone else who's seen this show, or knows someone who's seen it. A lot of people I spoke to insisted this show wasn't real, and that it was the result of a bunch of collective false memories, or maybe even an elaborate ARG but I still believed in it. Even if there was no evidence of this show anywhere, surely there were too many eyewitness testimonies out there to write it off as a hoax, right? I've always had a thing for lost media, and this was one of the most fascinating examples I knew of. My biggest breakthrough came when I spoke to Erin, one of my closest friends, about it. We were chatting over at our local coffee shop, and I decided to tell her about my search for the big room. As I described what I heard about the show to her, she just kind of casually nodded for the most part. 
But as soon as I mentioned the person with the cow mask, Erin's eyes flew open and her lower jaw dropped. Holy shit. Erin said. My dad mentioned having an aunt who wore a cow mask and worked on a kid's show, and I completely forgot about it until now. We didn't hesitate. Erin drove me right over to her parents' house to speak to her father, Paul. Erin told her father that I wanted to know more about that aunt who wore the cow mask. He wondered why I was so curious about that weird old memory, but decided it wouldn't hurt to talk about it anyway. Paul explained that he knew very little about this aunt of his, and didn't even remember her name. He heard she worked on a kid's show, but didn't know what the show was called, and never saw any episodes of it. The aunt very rarely came over to their house, never more than once a year, but when she did, she was always insistent on wearing that cow mask, so he had no idea what her face looked like. And she never ever spoke, instead making mooing sounds. He always thought she was weird, but usually didn't think much about her between each visit. Paul then told me his aunt passed away in the early 80s, which I realized conveniently lined up with when the big room was last seen. After she died, Paul's family was given the aunt's cow mask by the coroners, and they've kept it in a box in the closet ever since. I began to quiver with excitement. My friend's family actually had a prop from the long-lost kid show I was looking for. I politely asked if I could see it. He said yes, in fact, I could keep it. He had no use for that old cow mask anymore. I couldn't thank Paul enough. As soon as he handed me the box, I grabbed it from him and continued to thank him even after I walked out the front door. On the drive home, Erin congratulated me on my find, then told me that she had an appointment today and unfortunately wouldn't be there to open the box with me. However, she said I could send her photos, since she was just as curious to see it as I was. I promised I would, before thanking her as she dropped me off at my house and drove away. In my be bedroom, I opened up the box and pulled out the item inside, an ordinary looking rubber cow mask that was in surprisingly good condition for something that had apparently been created back in the 50s. I turned the mask over in my hands a few times as my excitement slowly waned. I couldn't help but wonder if this prop was legit or not. There was nothing to confirm it wasn't just a generic cow mask bought from a local store recently. Maybe Erin and her father were just playing some kind of prank on me. If it was a prank, then it was an unbelievably elaborate one, given that Erin didn't seem to know about the show before I told her, and there would have been no way for her to tell her father in the time she drove me to the house. I took a few photos of the mask from different angles, promising myself to send them to Erin and post them online soon. I then decided maybe a photo or two of myself wearing the mask would also be fun to see. I put it on, surprised by how comfortable it was for something so old and cheap looking. After taking a few selfies from both the front and side, I reached up to pull the mask off my face, but it wouldn't budge. For some reason, the mask felt a lot tighter on my skin and a lot warmer than when I had first put it on. The harder I tugged with both hands, the more it hurt, as if I was pulling on my own skin instead of a rubber covering. I began to panic and hyperventilate as the mask heated up more and more, until it felt like I had a fever. The room began to sway as I felt dizzy and nauseous. I wanted to vomit before realizing that would make things worse. Sweat formed on my skin, and my face began to itch like crazy, but the mask prevented me from scratching or wiping the sweat away. I grabbed my phone and desperately began to text Erin for help. However, the phone began to ring while I was in the middle of typing the message. It said the call was from the big room, even though I didn't have that number anywhere in my contacts. I answered it anyway, just out of curiosity. Hi Kelly, said a male voice that sounded pre-recorded. My hands trembled and I felt like puking again. How did this man know my name? The voice continued. We're really happy to have you as part of the big room. 
We unfortunately had to end the show a long time ago after one of our favorite cast members, Miss Moo the Cow Lady, passed away. However, now that you've agreed to become the new Miss Moo, we can safely say that our show will now be resuming production very soon. And don't worry about your friend Erin, we'll find a part for her as well. We'll be coming over tonight to pick you up. Until then, move your heart away, Kelly. As soon as the message ended, the caller hung up. I was terrified and confused. I had a million questions dancing through my brain. What the fuck is going on? I screamed out loud to no one in particular. At least, that's what I tried to say. All that came out was a loud mooing sound. <laughs>